So the sample space is the list of all possible outcomes. Um, and how do we represent this? We can represent it as an organized list. So if you were, like if, if, if I was to pick a name from for, um, the list of names in this class, right? What are the possible outcomes? It's each and every single one of your names. There are 10 names. So I can organize that in a list, okay? Or I could do a tree diagram or whatever. That's the sample space. All right, so um, let's do this one. A coin is tossed twice. Represent the sample space for this experiment by making a tree diagram. So the first time I toss the coin, right, what are the possible outcomes that I'm going to get? The first time that I toss it, what am I going to get? I'm either going to get heads or I'm going to get tails, right? Um, and the second time, what am I going to get? Either heads or tails, okay? So what I'm going to do is make a tree diagram. And the way that works is this. So here are the possible outcomes. For the first toss, I'm going to get either heads or tails. Okay? Now, for my second toss, Right? Now, suppose I got heads the first time. I toss it again, and I'm either going to get heads or tails. But suppose I got tails the first time. I toss it again, and I'm going to get heads or tails. Okay? So, what is the sample space? The sample space is all the possible outcomes for the entire experiment. The entire experiment had two tosses. So one possibility is I get heads the first time, heads the second time. Another one is I get heads, then tails. What's another one? And what's the last one? Tails and tails. Okay? So that's the sample space. Those are all the possible outcomes. Now, the experiment that we did here is called a two-stage experiment for obvious reasons that we tossed the coin twice. Um, if you've got more stages, we call it a multi-stage experiment. All right. Now, look at this one. You have one red token and one black token placed in a bag. So here's your bag. And you've got a red token and a black token in there. A token is drawn and the color and the color is recorded. It is then returned to the bag. A second draw is made. Represent the sample space for this experiment by making a tree diagram. So again, how many are we, how many times are we doing this? Twice, right? Okay. So again, here are the outcomes. And here's the first draw. What are the possibilities for the first draw? Red or black. And then for the second draw, for each of this, I get red or black and red or black. So what's the sample space? Right, red, 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 black, black, red, black black okay and this order is important so rb and br are not the same because in the first case you got red first then black suppose it mattered for some reason then you got black first then red okay so it, it matters all right so what does the fundamental counting principle say it says that if you want to find the number of possible outcomes in a sample space. So here's the sample space. How many outcomes are there? Okay, so there are four outcomes in the sample space, right? 
Now, suppose you wanted to find that number without going through this tree diagram. Then what you would do is this. You multiply the number of possible outcomes from each stage or event. So in the first stage, okay, in the first stage, I've got two in this bag, and I can either pick a red or a black, so I've got two choices in the first stage. Then I put it back. Now I'm going to go a second round, okay? I can either pick red or black. That's, raise your hand, how many choices is that the second time? The second time is two, again, right? So two times two gives you four, all right? So each time you go to the bag, you've got two choices. Each time you're going to toss the coin, You've got two choices, heads or tails. You could be tossing it for like the 947th time, right? You're still going to get either heads or tails, okay? So at each stage, you've got two choices. Now look at this example. New cars are available with a wide selection of options. You, can, you have to choose one option from each of these choices. Um, how many different cars could a consumer create? given this. So you have 11 choices for exterior color, seven for interior, five for seat material, four for the wheels, three for the doors, right? So you go and you're going to have to choose one of each. So imagine, so think of it this way. Suppose every time somebody goes to choose one of these cars, they have to make a brand new choice. Like they can't repeat any of the choices that somebody else made. So how many cars are you going to cycle through before you would have to repeat a choice, right? So think of it that way. It, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. So what you would do is at each stage, you look at how many choices you have. So this is stage one. I'm going to choose exterior color. I've got 11 choices. Now I go on to stage two. I've got interior color, seven choices. So I multiply by seven. Then I've got five choices for seat material. Then I've got three choices for the engine, and so on and so forth. Is that everybody? 11, 7, 5, 3, 6, 4, 3. And when you multiply all of those, what do you get? 83,160. So that's how many cars, that's how many people have to choose cars before you have to repeat one. Right? Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Like, look at all the choices that we live with. You know, like, look at all the choices open to us. That's a pretty, that, that's huge. Okay. So that's it for section one. Um, and I'm going to move on to section two. I'm going to do um, at least the first half of section two. Okay. All right. Um, a permutation is an arrangement of objects in which order is important. So let's look at this example. Three friends are getting ready to be photographed, okay? And um, for simplicity's sake, we'll call the friends A, B, and C, okay? So we've got three people that are getting ready to be photographed. The different ways they can arrange themselves is a permutation. So you call them up to take a photograph. Now they could stand in the order of A, then B, then C. That's one permutation. Or they could stand in the order of B, then C, then A. That's a different permutation, right? So if you look at the photo, that's going to look different, okay? It's going to be a different picture. So each of these is a different permutation. Let's list the possibilities. So one possibility is they stand like this, right? Another possibility is A still is the first one, and B and C switch, right? So this is when A stood first. What if B is the first one? What are the choices? A, C, or B, C, A. Now what if C was first? A, B, or B, A. Right? So how many different permutations are there? There are six permutations. Now, we can get at this number another way, right? In order to occupy the three positions, 
Okay. Now suppose you've got, you know, these three markers for them to stand on. To fill the first position, how many candidates do you have to stand on that first position out of the three friends? How many candidates do you have to choose from? You've got three. So you've got three choices here. Okay. How many people do you have here? How many now? So between your A, B, and C, you've got three choices. Now suppose that person went over there. How many people do you have now to choose from? Two. Suppose that guy went over there. How many people do you have now to choose from? Just one. So if these were each stages, then think of the fundamental counting principle, right? The total number is how many choices you have at each stage multiplied by each other. So then the total number of possibilities would be 3 times 2 times 1, 6. Okay? Write this. Okay? You will probably recall that that's a factorial. So the factorial of a positive integer, we don't do them for negative number, is written n exclamation mark, right? So that's n factorial. It's not that you're really excited about the n. That's why you have an exclamation point. Okay, it's n factorial. And it's the product of the positive integers less than or equal to n. So if you start with n, then you multiply by n minus 1, n minus 2, dot, 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 times 2, times 1. And remember that what is 0 factorial? It's 1. Okay? 0 factorial is 1. All right. So using factorials in the example above, in the first case you have 3 choices. So this would be 3 factorial which is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 possibilities, okay? All right, so take a look at this one. <clears throat> Shanice and Renee are members of a lacrosse team. If the 20, or, um, if the 20 girls are on, on the team are each assigned a jersey from 1 to 20 at random, what is the probability that Shanice's jersey will be 1 and Renee's jersey will be 2? Okay? So let's just figure out how many possibilities are in the sample space. Right? How would we figure that out? How many, um, how many jerseys do we have to number? 20. So for the first jersey, how many numbers do we have to choose from? And for the second jersey... Right, so for the first jersey, we have 20 to choose from, then we have 19, then we have 18. So using what we just did, what is the sample space? How many? We have 20 factorial total possibilities. All right, so how much is uh, 20 factorial? All right, so um, this is the sample space. Which is the possible outcomes. We actually don't have to calculate um, um, 20 factorial. I'll, I'll tell you why. Okay. Now, how many favorable outcomes do we have? A favorable outcome is um, it's a situation that agrees with you, right? It's it's a, it's a it's a um, like a best case situation, all right. So what is it that we want here? We want Renee. Um, we want Shanice to be one and Renee to be two. That's our favorable outcome. All right? So if Shanice gets 1 and Renee gets 2, right? If if we set those 
So this is Shanice and this is Renee. If she gets one and she gets two, for the other person, how many choices are there left? 18 and then 17 and so on. So what we have left is 18 factorial, right? So that's how many choices they, there are that agree with what we want. Okay, so basically all I want is for Shanice to get one, Renee to get two, and the other 18 can get whatever it is that they like. All right? So now, what is the probability? What is the probability that I'm going to get this out of that? Well, the probability is 18 factorial over 20 factorial. Okay? And the way we do this is this. You leave the lesser number as it is and you start breaking down the bigger number in this case it's the 20 when we start breaking that down I get 20 factorial is 20 times 19 times when I get to 18 I just leave it as a factorial right so what can I do now with the 18 factorials cancel them out so this is 1 over 20 times 19 which is 1 over what? 380. Okay? Now, suppose in the example that we were doing before with the people taking the picture, suppose there are five people in a room, right? This is a similar example. You've got five people in a room, but only three chairs for them to sit on. Okay? It's an unfortunate situation, but hey, this is what it is. So how many different seating arrangements are there, right? So to fill the first chair, how many choices do we have for that one? Five. What about for the second? What about for the third? Three. So the number of choices by the fundamental counting principle is five times four times three, which is what? Sixty. Right? Now... Can we write this as a factorial? Can I? Well, if I did 5 factorial, what would that be? 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But look at what I have. These two are extra. Right? How can I get rid of those? What would I do to get rid of them? I can divide by them, right? So what would I divide by? 2 factorial, right? So if I did 5 factorial over 2 factorial, then I get 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1, which is exactly what I want, okay? So I could say 5 factorial over 2 factorial. What is on top? Because this is a permutation. It's not the probability that something will happen. Okay? So that is how we calculate permutations. Now, you may or may not have seen um, this notation before. So this is the permutations of n distinct objects. So you've got n objects. You've got five people taken r at a time, three at a time. You've got five people. You're choosing four three lucky ones to sit down, okay? We write it like this. N is the total number of people. It's the bigger number. R is the smaller number. Okay, it's, it's how many you're choosing. And the formula is this. It's n factorial over n minus r factorial, just like we did here, right? We had five people. We were going to choose three. Five minus three is two factorial, okay? So we had n factorial over five minus three factorial, okay? So look at this. You've got teams, and each team has 15 students. Now, each team of 15 is directed to select team members to be officers. 
Now suppose Sam, Valencia, and Deshane are on a team, and the positions are decided at random. What is the probability that they are selected as president, vice president, and secretary, respectively? So the one case that we're going to be happy with is if Sam is president, Valencia is VP, and Deshane is secretary, right? What is the probability? Probability means you take the sample space, you take the number of favorable outcomes, and you divide. So probability is favorable outcomes over the sample space. Okay? So how are we going to do this? Um, what is the permutation that we're looking for here? How many different people do we have? How many, how many total people do we have? 15, right? So we have N, P, R. This is 15. And we're choosing three of them. So this is 15 factorial over 15 minus 3 factorial. So this is 15 out of 12 factorial. Uh, 15 factorial over 12 factorial. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so this is 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 factorial over 12 factorial. Okay, how much is that? 2,730. Okay? So this is the sample space. All right, this is the sample space. It's how many possible ways are there to get these three to fill these positions out of the 15, right? So this is your sample space. Huh? It can be. In this case, they are. Okay. So, what is the favorable outcome? How many favorable outcomes do we have? Do we have three, though? We just have one because it's, it's set. We want Sam to be president, Valencia VP, and Deshane secretary. So, we've got one possible only one situation that's going to make us happy, all right? So there is just one of those. So the probability is 1 out of 2,730. And remember, we never do decimals. All right, now, permutations with repetitions. So suppose now you've got these letters. You're on a game show. You're given these letters. And what you're going to do, they're going to put these letters in a bag. You're going to pick random ones, okay, 11 times. You're going to pick 11 random letters. What are the chances that you pick them in the right order to spell Mississippi? That's a pretty wild chance, right? Like you pick the random, you pick 11 letters. What are the chances that the first one is an M, the second one is an I, the second one is an S, I mean the third one is an S, then an S, right? That, 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 like, imagine how lucky you have to be to get that. So let's see what the chances are. The difference, though, is that suppose you want the second one to be an I, right? Well, it could, you could pick either that I or that I, or that I, or that I, and it'll all be the same, right? Like nobody's telling you, no, you know what? This is the I that you have to pick first. So any of those I's will work. If you want the S, you can choose either one of those S's and it'll be fine. So this is a permutation with a repetition. When you have this, suppose you have N objects that you're picking, and some of them are 
repeated R one times. Another one is repeated R two times. Then you divide by the number of repetitions. So let's take a look at this one. How many times are these letters uh, repeated? So how many times is the I being repeated? Four times. And the S? Four times. And the P? Two times. What else? Is that it? Yeah. All right. So the permutations, it'll be 11 factorial over 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 2 factorial. Okay. So this will be Um, if you were to do this, you can use a calculator, um, but basically it's 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial. One of these can cancel, but you can use a calculator to do these. And how much is the answer? It's 34,650. So the probability is 1 out of 34,650. It's 4 factorial times 2 factorial. You can do it on the calculator too. There is a factorial button. Okay, I'll check. Take a look at calculators in a second. So this is where I'm going to stop. Your homework for next time will be, um, it will be section one, all of section one, and just these three from section two. All right.